I mean, for, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm getting, I don't want to get overexcited about it, but uh, I am getting slightly overexcited about it because I can't quite believe that price. He was he was a big eye catcher on debut. So he's got the top RPR on that novice. I've got the top speed figure on mine. He's the only front runner in the race. If Hot Fuss is out of the three, David, then I might not come back tomorrow night. Oh, please well, be out of the <laughs> Look, Tom, if I don't come back, then someone else is going to have to present, and it might be you, mate. It might be you. They might ask you to come yeah. in. Oh no, oh no. I might not come back tomorrow, right? I might not come back tomorrow, right? Never let it be said that the producers of In The Know don't have A, a sense of humour, and B, way too much time on their hands. Uh, good evening and welcome to In The Know, brought to you by the Racing Post and Coral, uh, head of day two of the York Ebor meeting. Unfortunately, we went around the office and uh, nobody else uh, wanted to take over the reins this evening. So, uh, despite Hot Fuss finishing fourth in the Acom Stakes today, uh, I said, OK, fair enough, I'll come back into the studio and get stuck in to day two. But uh, apart from that, what a day one. What a day one we saw. Master Daff, uh, under Frankie de Tori, dominated at the Judmont International. Uh, that said, it took Frankie a, a, a previous race to get the fractions right, as Gregory went off like a scalded cat and set it up for continuous uh, in the, uh, the Voltager. Uh, and uh, Indian Run was the winner of the Acom for Eve Johnson Horton. Uh, and uh, we have plenty of other winners on the card as well, many of them tipped by the panel, not me of course, uh, but that's not what I'm here for. Uh, if you do know what I'm here for, get involved on the chat or send a stamp address envelope uh, to the Racing Post offices. But it is live and interactive, of course. Tomorrow we've got the Yorkshire Oaks and we've got the Lowther. Uh, and uh, we've got a card where the play spot last year paid 2,700 quid to a pound, which suggests uh, that uh, it might well be a uh, tough day. As we said on last night's show, if you struggled on day one, it's only going to get harder and harder. But that is York Ebor week. That's York in general. Uh, get involved on the chat. Hello, good evening to everyone. To Jim Freight, to Daniel Valentine, to Nick Carr, to Tom Leach, to Mike Boy, to Stevens99, uh, Rob Dixon, Alan Keane, and uh, much, much more. Make sure you like that stream as well. We got a record number of likes last night, and I didn't even tell you 
that if we get over a thousand this week, Tom Siegel has said he's going to come in to the studio for Champions Day. That's right, Tom, isn't it? Uh, we had 366 likes last night, and we didn't even have that little bit of bait on the hook. Oh, flipping it! That's far too many now. If you if you out there can just stop doing the likes, <laughs> we'll be absolutely <laughs> delighted. Uh, yes. Uh, anyway, what do we make of uh, what do we make of day one? Uh, Tom Siegel, Frankie De Tori went from the uh, well, the ridiculous to the sublime. Yeah, he was horrendous on Gregory and brilliant on Mostadaf, wasn't he? As you as you quite rightly pointed out, uh, I didn't uh, sort of, sort of, it just shows you, doesn't it, what races are like without pacemakers? I don't know what you. I used to like pacemakers in races because you sort of knew what you were going to get. Nowadays, when they've sort of, the, the modern fashion is not to have pacemakers, isn't it? And it's weird. Because Paddington, the one thing Paddington needed was a pacemaker. I've always thought that. And they're mucking about with him. And, you know, in the past, they'd have had hundreds of pacemakers. Now yeah. they've sudden, suddenly stopped doing pacemakers. But there we go. There we go. Uh, yeah, as you say, Frankie was brilliant on, on Mostadaf. A little bit disappointing because the race didn't go for Nashville. I thought she ran a mighty race. Yeah. Definitely stayed the trip. And just just hard. She gave she gave a very good horse six length start, didn't she? And she got beaten a length. So I thought she ran a mighty race. I thought everything else sort of went to plan, didn't it? And you could have, you know, I thought the Aiken was a real ramshackle race, if truth be told. It was one of the worst two group races I've ever seen. But uh, it was a good winner. The yeah. winner's probably right. And Continuous looked very good, didn't he? But I wouldn't give up on Gregory turning the tables around in the St. Edger. I thought he did really well. He was sticking on again at the end. Well, I mean, I mean, you say about a lack of pacemakers, Tom. Um, I mean, they had they had a lot of pacemakers in that race, didn't they, Bally Doyle? Obviously, none of them from the same connections. But it was, at, I mean, they were going 40, 41 miles an hour. Paul Keeley, by the way, in the studio as well, bring you in because you are you're chomping at the bit. Yeah, here, I mean, it's, it's just one of those. I, I wrote a piece the other day for, for the email column for the members saying that I, I genuinely got an opinion that actually jockeys have absolutely no idea how fast they're going from one race to another. And yeah. That one virtually can, proves it, doesn't it? Because he's gone miles faster yeah. over a mile and a half with a continuous tested lead in the Great Voltiger, yeah. and then he's got the easiest lead going, with everyone ignoring him, basically, in the early stages uh, in the international. And I, I just say, like, you know, if you're driving a car at 32 mile an hour, can you tell the difference between 32 mile an hour and 30 mile an hour? Well, not only that, but if I'm driving a car, I normally have me sat down on my phone, which tells me one number. This tells me another number. You get one of those flashing signs up as you're driving, well, and, it, and I'm looking at all of them thinking, I don't know which one's right. But two mile, two mile an hour for, for a minute is like yeah. 40 lengths in a race horse. Yeah, yeah. In a race. In a race. I, you know, I, like, I can't just tell the difference. Yeah. Couldn't agree with you more. I used to drive me mad when the commentators used to go, they're going fast without anyone. How the hell did they know if they were yeah. going fast? Or we had the times on the on the yeah exactly yeah. I, I think yeah. the thing is what people what people mostly go on is they look at a race and they go are the horses keen and if there are keen horses they can't be going very quickly if the horses aren't keen then they must be going a solid gallop that's pretty much what you what, what people go on isn't it mm. um, and then you also get the races of course where you know where, where they where they go very very quickly slow it down again but there's there's so many ways to win and to uh, to lose a race but yeah um, I yeah I almost thought is there anything that's Frankie could have done on, on on Gregory. Could he have completely changed the tactics and sat off when the other two went on? Of course on? he could. Well, of course he could. Yeah, I mean, but they all could. They all could have made a decision, yeah. couldn't they? Like, you know what I mean? But you know, the point being, they, you know, Frankie obviously wanted to make it a test. Yeah. Uh, but he didn't want to go too fast. But then they don't actually know how fast they're going. Well, and interestingly, when when Mossadegh jumped off, I did think I thought, okay, we, we've got the one horse who we is probably the strongest stayer over the trip, and I think Frankie tried to do that, and he tried to do it in the voltage. So mm. it's almost, um, yeah, the, 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 there was a plan A on each race. One of it worked, one of them worked, and one of them doesn't. But I guess that's for the, the same for a lot of top sportsmen, though, Tom, isn't it? You say, oh, an absolute genius. That's come off. The plan has worked wonders, and uh, you know, sometimes it does, <laughs> sometimes it doesn't. I don't know if you're a golf fan, uh, Ross, but watching Scotty Scheffler play golf, I mean, he's like off the charts, the best ever nearly in tee to green, and he can't get the ball in the hole. Yeah. I mean, the stats tell you that. You know, he's, a, he's, a, he's been, his putting this year has been shocking, but his, his actual tee to green has been up there with Tiger Woods as some of the best play in the history of the sport. Mm. So, you know, so, so this is what happens in sport, isn't it? You know. You get some guy like your man in the open who knocks every putt in, he's going to win. And that's just what it is. And sometimes in these sporting events, the margins are so small mm. that it just, just a couple of things have to change. You know, I, you know, for example, Gregory could have easily won that race and Nashua or Paddington could have easily won the other race. It's just the margins of sport. That's yeah. what it is. 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, the Premier League season was day one. Yeah. Newcastle are going to win the Premier League and Villa are going to get relegated after one performance. Villa come out and batter Everton uh, next time out and Newcastle don't get a look in against City. So, uh, anyway, these things happen. We had some we still cracking performances, though, uh, David. Mostadaf was a deserve. I mean, he was the best horse in the race on uh, on ratings. He, Johnson Horton's knocking in uh, winners left, right and centre. Nice to see her have a uh, a group winner on the uh, the Knaves Meyer. And, um, yeah, continuous. Ryan Moore must have thought all these Christmases had had come up once halfway through that race. Yeah, listen, it was nothing if not an interesting day on the Naves Meyer. Um, I mean, firstly, Indian run, brilliant to Eve Johnson Horton with a proper... I know Tom wasn't a fan of that Acom, but I think it's hard to knock the winner now. His winner, Ascot, followed up from here. And, the and he's ever. very good. The worst group race ever. Look at the time. It's absolute rubbish. By Super well, Nation, they never win a proper race. Horses like that. So Let's disappointing judge. we have Acombs like that. Sorry, that was my rant over for the day. Well, I would say Let's... the Acombs are funny because of the conditions of the Acom, of course. You, you do get, you know, you, what is it? You, have to, you can't have won a race after, before mid-July or something like that. So, you know, it is often a little bit of a strange race. I mean, you look at, apart from Chaldi, and you, you get some good horses win it, but you also get Does anyone know who... the rationale behind those conditions, by the way? Why on earth would you have that? Other than, exactly. other than to design a race to have very few runners in it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's just it's no sense whatsoever. To give everyone a crack, I guess. Yeah. But, um, but uh, yeah, I don't. Know. I guess that's why it doesn't. It doesn't. Doesn't. It doesn't have the most consistent profile, does it? Because you never quite know what you're going to get. Anyway, uh, David Stevens. Um, uh, Sorry, Dave. That's all right. It's, it's fine, Tommy. So you can. We'll have a. We'll have a. We should have a, uh, a subscribers only bit where yeah. the, where Tom just <laughs> just moans for five minutes. <laughs> Special little podcast for you, David. Anyway, bring some. Bring some PR glitz and glamour to the show, mate. Well, yeah, I was going to take you back to racing. We've had, obviously, Everton and, and Aston Villa, and we've had Scotty Scheffler. And I just want to tell you, you're absolutely right about those road signs, by the way. Never match your mileage you're actually doing in your car. But anyway, that's a whole different show. Let's bring it back to the racing. Let's bring it back to a couple of price boosts. Gregory and Bally Mountain Boy both got beat today. So let's have a change of luck tomorrow. Starting in the first in the Lowther Relief Rally. Is currently two to one, but she'll be five to two for the duration of this live show, up to 20 quid. And same conditions apply to Blue Stocking in the Yorkshire Oak. She's currently nine to two, 11 to two for the duration of this. So, and you just wanted to diss the Acom just because my nap landed in that race, Tom. I know what you're like. My one moment of glory all year, and you've dissed it. I completely forgot, Dave. I, I gave, I, that race lasted about two seconds in my memory, and I will not be thinking about it ever again. Okay, lovely stuff. Uh, if you want to book uh, Tom Siegel for uh, motivational speeches or uh, bars mitzvahs, maybe uh, 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 weddings or anything like that, uh, do get in touch. It's Tom uh, dot Siegel at uh, Happy Go Lucky. Don't you dare! Don't you find... <laughs> <laughs> Look, uh, what I've learned, what I learned from comedy as well, was that if you ever want to book a comedian, it's just their name at gmail dot com. Email them. It's, 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 no one ever has anything particularly clever to come up with. Anyway, uh, get involved on the price boost and get involved on this as well. Are you ready to take your passion for horse racing to the next level? With Racing Post Members Club, you gain exclusive access to the best racing insights, analysis, and tools. Immerse yourself in award-winning content from interviews with the sport's biggest stars to race previews and behind-the-scenes features. Get the inside track with early access to the Racing Post digital newspaper from 9pm in the evening and daily selections from our expert tipsters. Racing Post Members Club is your ultimate ticket to the thrilling world of racing. Subscribe today and pay just £9.99 per month for the first two months with the code SUMMER. See the link in the video description for more information. Terms apply. OK, get involved in the Racing Post Members Club then as we uh, get involved on day two of the uh, York Ebor meeting. Uh, and uh, we've got the louder stakes. Uh, will it be better than the A-Cup? That's the question. Group two contest relief. It is a good race. It is a good race. Relief Rally, two to one favourite for this Lowther Stakes. Cherry Blossom, nine to four. Flora Bermuda, five. Star of Mystery, eight to one. Beautiful Diamond, eight to one. Symbology, 25. Gunsberg is 25. Queen's Guard is 33 to one outsider of the bunch. Uh, in fact, that's not true. Dorothy Lawrence is the outsider of the bunch, and even she uh, has uh, uh, listed form 
uh, over uh, this uh, this course over five furlongs early on in the season. But the best uh, filly, uh, two-year-old filly of the season is Relief Rally so far. She could easily be four from four. Uh, she was impressive uh, against the bias at uh, Newbury last time out. She had won everywhere but the, the line, uh, uh, after the line anyway, to, uh, at Royal Ascot as well. She's two to one for William Haggis, who's got a really, really strong hand uh, tomorrow uh, on the uh, the Knavesmire, uh, Tom Siegel. Like I said, it is a good race because Cherry Blossom was wildly impressive. Flora Bermuda absolutely dotted up. Beautiful Diamond was favourite for the uh, uh, for the uh, for the Queen Mary, of course, uh, behind Relief Rally. Star of Mystery, I think, was softened up. I mean, I I backed a couple of hours back Symbology and Queen's Guard, who I thought were well in with the, uh, a, a shout here as well. So, um, yeah, wide open race, but a worthy favourite in Relief Rally, who's barely done anything wrong all year. Can we have another one of those? If Symbology finishes in the first three, you don't come back tomorrow. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if Symbology or Queen's Guard don't get in the frame, then yeah, I'll I'll quit. Brilliant. Uh, boys in the background, remember that. He won't be coming back, this lad, tomorrow. <laughs> They've got no chance. Uh, I, think it's, I think it's an absolute cracker of a race. I think the first three at the, I think the, three at the top of the market are three of the best fillies we've seen. Three-year-old, uh, two-year-old fillies we've seen so far this season. I think Star of Mystery is much better than he showed last time. Beautiful Diamond's one of the fastest breezes we've had and probably did too much too soon. Maybe was a bit keen at Ascot and better than she's shown. So... I thought it was an absolutely brilliant race. I'm a massive Relief Rally fan. I think she's been the best Billy we've seen. She should have probably won the uh, Queen Mary as well, wouldn't she? She was in front before and after the line. Step up to six furlongs is short to her the way she finishes. But I was really impressed with both Cherry Blossom and Flora of Bermuda too. Uh, very different ground for Flora of Bermuda. It was pretty quick today. The times were very quick. But I think she'll have... She's by Dark Angel, so maybe she liked the soft ground. But Cherry Blossom, no, no, never was really, really impressive. I thought the sectionals were excellent in Ireland. Uh, it's one of those where we said Aidan O'Brien never runs his best two-year-olds at, uh, at York, and it seemed proved right when Emordian went from 5-2 to two out to 14-1 to one and finished tailed off last. But I think Cherry Blossom's a bit different on what she showed last time. She was she was really impressive. So I think Relief Rally will win, but I don't think it'll be easy. And your two can start now when they still won't, Ross. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough, Tom Siegel. Absolutely. Fair enough. Uh, but it's not a sprint handicap, so you're not going to tip the winner, are you? But uh, it's... True. <laughs> 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 Paul Keeley, uh, the uh, the loudest. Yeah, stage, I mean, I think Relief Rally is very much the one to beat. She's definitely going to like the extra furlong. I'm, you know, I agree with Tom. That it's very competitive. I don't actually think we've seen a really superstar two year old filly yet. Uh, I really don't. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go charging in at nine to four or two to one or whatever. Um, I think Star of Mystery would be four to one if she hadn't run last time. Hmm. And. That run was just too bad to be true, beating at six on. Um, it's not right. Um, there was a bit of rain around. It was a lovely uh, bit of team tactics, I thought. That. So we were talking yeah. about pacemakers and team tactics. There were four runners, but there was two ammo racing horses in, yeah, and, and but, one of them softened you know, the I think, you know, And I think the way she strode out on really, really fast ground at Haydock in June, when she just won by 11 lengths, I know it wasn't much of a race, and then and won again at, on, the, on the July course, and listed company after that by four. I think she's pretty good. I w I would, I'm happy to ignore that one. They seem to think there must have been some sort of problem. They put a tongue tie on. So I would have a couple of quid each way. I know it's not a race I've not a race I've tipped in tomorrow. It's not a race I particularly want to bet in. But if I was going to put up one, it'd be Star of Mystery against Relief Rally. Okay, Star of Mystery, who yeah did absolutely dot up at Haydock on fast ground. Beautiful Diamond's also got fast ground form as well. And yeah, like I said, I mean um, I'm, not, I'm not going to listen to Tom Siegel poking fun from home. But I thought uh, I thought symbology was a little bit interesting. She was green as grass on. On debut at, uh, at this track and got up to it's a win and she looked uh, she looked interesting last time I had at Ascot she just again was was in the poor position that day but she's going to be in box one the, the interesting one for me though is Queen's Guard who um, the racing post handicappers have said that the the two good dolphin horses in that Yarmouth race ran about a stone and a half below their their form but I'm not entirely sure that's 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 true on the numbers I've got and. I thought she was quite interesting. We said about Michael Bell's two-year-olds, uh, Danny, uh, Danny Tuthope in the saddle as well. Yeah, I'm going to be, I'm going to be, I'm going to nibble at Queen's Guard at 33 to one, and we'll, we'll see Tom Siegel. We'll t see who's, uh, who's right. But just trying to save you some money, Ross. I'm just trying to get your bus fare home. <laughs> I don't want you to be sitting there in tomorrow going, oh my God, Gills has done it again. Poor me. I'm just trying to say, I'm just, look, I'm thinking, I'm thinking of you, Ross. <laughs> thanks, thanks, mate. That's that's really sweet. Uh, David Stevens, uh, uh, what have you got in the lauda? Well, firstly, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm with you, particularly with Symbology. 
Uh, third in the Princess Margaret, course and distance winner, which we know is always a, a plus here at York. Third in the Princess Margaret, the winner of that came out and ran okay to finish fourth in the in the pre morning. I think he's uh, she, sorry, symbology definitely uh, worth a flutter at 25. Of the ones at the head of the bed, and I'm still not convinced Aidan O'Brien does send his best two year olds to this meeting, so I'd leave Cherry Blossom alone, Flora Bermuda, as Tom said, me very different ground. Relief Rally, look, by far the most likely winner. William Haggis nominated this race straight after her winning the Super Sprint. They clearly think the world of her. They're talking about the Abbey at the end of the season for her. So she's by far the most likely winner. But do not be put off by Siegel. Symbology. Yeah. Stick with it. And Queen's Guard. Stick with them both. I want you back tomorrow night, Ross. Thanks, mate. Can we Thanks. have him off as well? Can we have John Hill back? If, he, if they are neither of them finishing the three as well. Be careful what you wish for. It's Simon Clare tomorrow. <laughs> It could be me and you, Tom. I mean, imagine that a whole hour, just me and you. Yeah, that's true, yeah. Uh, in the know with Statler and Waldorf. That would be good, wouldn't it? That's, uh... <laughs> the, uh, the Lowther Stakes, Paul Keeley. Uh, yeah, a, a little each way on the good old Philly Star of Mystery. OK, Star so of Mystery is an 8-1 to shot. I'll take Symbology and Queen's Guard. I can't wait for that reverse forecast. Play an absolute ball. Uh, Tom? Yeah, I'm... I... I, I think it's a brilliant race. Really, really looking forward to the best race of the week so far. Relief Rally for me. I think she's really good. OK, there you go. And David Stevens? Relief Rally to win and Symbology each way. <coughs> Excuse me. You're excused. Uh, Destiny Sound says, Ross, I stand with you. Symbology each way. Flora Bermuda for Mike Boy. Uh, Appleby Horses are soft at the moment, says Robert Dixon. So it's, true, it's true. They're still not getting those winners, are they, at the, at the top level? Uh, and uh, finally, some be beautiful diamond each way, says Cameron Longstaff, with a, uh, an incredible... Uh, name there. Uh, the 225 at, uh, at York, the, uh, the premier yearling stakes here. Uh, Two-year-olds lining up for a, uh, for a big pot. Uh, Ziggy's Condor is 9-2 favourite here. Persica 5-1, Twilight Romance 6-1, Dragon Leader 6-1, Dappling 10-1, Van the Man 14s. We never stop at 16-1, Angel of England at 16-1. Bigger prices the rest, but again, loads of horses here uh, have uh, either had this as the, the target over the course of the year or are certainly uh, turning up with, uh, with hopes and dreams of uh, landed 147 grand, but um, despite the fact that we get about 200 horses uh, every every year in this race, Keels, there's only about four trainers who ever win it. Well, yeah, exactly. Well, Richard Hannan is the king of the sales races, isn't he? Uh, and Richard Hannan seen here before him. They've won so many of them all over the country. Mm. Uh, and you look at him, he's won five of the last seven of the, this. And obviously, Persica um, would be the obvious one. Sean Levy riding um, won really nicely last time. If I had a look. Um, only one, and just one of the last ten winners had only had one run. Uh, one of the last ten winners had only had two runs, and all the rest had had between four and eight. Uh, you know, and it, you know it's a big field, and yeah. you know, when a bit of experience doesn't go amiss. And uh, I just thought, with the market focusing on all the really lightly raced horses, uh, I'll look for something else. And then, then I thought to myself, and I thought, well, hang on a minute, if Relief Rally is nine to four to win a Group Two on the strength of beating Dappling by three lengths in the uh, in the super sprint, then Dapplin has to be about a 10 to 1 in a Mickey Mouse sales race, getting weight from the entire field. Uh, I just thought that was, you know, it's just the wrong price. Now, she was only fourth in the um, conditions Phillies race at, at Goodwood next time, but she didn't get the best of runs and it was bottomless ground. It was horrible. Uh, I'm not going to worry too much about that. I, I just think she's a tough horse. She, she'll, she'll run a race. Um, she's going to have to prove she stays, but I think no, I'm not that worried about that, to be honest. I mean, the, the uh, Dan was a the dual seven furlong winner. Yeah, so exactly. Right. So it, it, shouldn't be, it, it shouldn't be that much of an issue. And I just thought she's, she's interesting at a double-figure yeah. price. OK. Dappling, then, uh, who is a, a 10 to 1 shot for uh, Hannah was, and Are there extra places around it as well? There better be extra places. Yeah, it's a, five uh, places. There you go. Yeah, it's a 22 runner, uh, 22 runner sales race. So, yeah, I'd expect at least five places. Uh, Tom Siegel, yeah. Uh, Ziggy's Condor oh. heading in it here mm -hmm. at, uh, at 9 to 2 for, for Midland Park, who won this. But, yeah, there's, as uh, Keel said, it's often... Uh, horses who've taken in some really tough uh, races throughout the uh, the summer and come here and land a big pot, but yeah, the market is going for for the unexposed types. Well, yeah, uh, well, according to Keel's stats, there twenty percent of the time it's won by an unexposed type. I reckon there's less than twenty percent of the runners are unexposed. I think nearly all of them have had loads more runs. So I think that's not not a, not a statistic I would be worried about personally. Uh, I think Persica has a very very good chance of winning this. 
I remember Mum's tip was same owners, same trainer. I thought he was m mightily impressive at Salisbury the other day. I right, don't can know I just before. interject and say that 50% of the runners are unexposed, are having had only two runs? All right, well, still 20% of them did win. 20% but, but, um, and 50% of the runners. But my point is that she, I thought he was really impressive. He's by New Bay. I'm a sucker for New Bay. Might want a bit soft the ground, but thought he was really powerful and really strong through the start and through the finish of the race. I think he'll be perfectly suited by York. It, it was. I thought it was quite an interesting. But it, it, it seemed like a. I noticed after he won that at Salisbury because he came out three days later, didn't he? And I yeah. thought, what, what, what have they got in him in? And obviously, Mum's tipple connections as well. And um, you know, I thought, oh, they they really must have been disappointed with that run. I thought we want to go into it off the back of a win. It was a, yeah, it's an interestingly executed plan, this, isn't it? Well, I, I just think, well, I, I, I don't know if it's a plan or not. All I know is I think he's a class horse and I don't think many of them, many of these are. You know, it's but a, he's got dwelt start, both. Um, it didn't both dwelt runs. start. Watch, 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 uh, watch Salisbury back. He was drawn on the outside. It looks like he dwelt start, but he was in front after half a furlong. It didn't look like he was well to me. It was it didn't look like it was dwelling too much to me. Uh, I thought I think I think he'll be out in front, no problem. Get I think he's I think he's very good myself. I think he'll be too classy for these. Okay, um, there were a few others um, who I thought were a little bit interesting. That that race at Ponty, Twilight Romance, and We Never Stop. I thought that was a half decent contest. They were, were yeah. a bit of a ding dong battle, and they've um, they've uh, they both got York form as well. One's drawn five, and one's drawn seven, which is in theory, especially the way that. Nursery went today, a, a decent place to be. Uh, quite, quite understand why Twilight Romance the sixes and We Never Stop sixteens though. No, no, I totally get that. I thought Twilight Romance probably softened the race up a bit for mm. We Never Stop. The time before Twilight Romance had beaten him uh, quite easily. I, I, I know you're talking about the draw. I don't think there's any. I mean, Designer was the highest draw. Mackinar and JM Juggle were nineteen and twenty, and they were only just touched off in the sprint. I just think it happened at the pace. That Zulu Chief in the last nursery made it sort of over that side, and the ones this side sort of never got into it, even though I'm not a great believer in that sort of stuff. But I thought that was the case in that race, so I'm not worried about the draw. I think you can win from anywhere at York. Okay. Uh, I'm going to throw one at you that you're going to tell me he's got absolutely no chance here, Tom, so I'm looking forward to, uh, to it. But uh, Land Lover, Craig Lidster, Ben Curtis, must be at least 50 to 1 here. I know he's only got a rating of 78, but ran on debut here, surrounded by horses who are rated 80 plus, 90 plus. Just touched off at Carlisle over six furlongs behind Soldiers Gold, who's now rated uh, 90 as well. Third behind Twilight Romance and We Never Stop over that six furlong trip here at the track. They're six to one and 16 no. to one. Craig List is in cracking form. <laughs> 50 to one? No, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna have that one on the Ross isn't coming back list, because I think you're right. I think he's got a chance. Uh, she is it? A she? Uh, I thought she. He, whatever it is, um, uh, is ran it really well. Yeah. Colt, yeah, whatever. He ran really well in the Acom as well. Hartem was in that, wasn't he? And you know, some good horses win that. He ran. I think he was second time up. He went into the Acom, uh, not the Acom, the, the Woodcut. Woodcut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Woodcut. He didn't really like the track, but he ran really well. So yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put anyone off him at fifty one. That's for sure. Okay, uh, of course. But you weren't uh, expecting that, were you? I wasn't expecting that. No, no. But I'll take it. <laughs> time to you Ross I know I tell you what if Symbol Symbology and Queen's Guard finish 1-2 in the first and then Land Lover wins the second I won't be coming back but for very different reasons uh, yeah. David Stevens. I'm not coming back either for exactly the opposite reasons to you <laughs> <laughs> because the game's gone uh, but uh, David Stevens, um, five places on offer for this uh, wide open uh, uh, but very very valuable pot yes I'm glad the niceties were short lived there as well um, yes five places each way as we've said Richard Hannon, his record in the race, like his father before him, has been highlighted. He is the subject of a price boost in this. He's got two others as well as the two that we've talked about. Richard Hannon to win this sales race, 5-2 to two from 15-8. to eight. I'm with you, Ross, I think, somewhere along the line. You mentioned the Ponty race with Twilight Romance, and we never stop. Uh, Twilight Romance has that all-important York form. Slightly better off at the weights now. I think that's probably explains some of the price discrepancy there, but... They'd be the two for me. But yeah, Richard Hannon to win this yet again, 5-2 to two from 15-8. to eight. OK. Uh, he's run 20 horses in the past 10 years. He's won five uh, of the uh, the renewals. So uh, there you go, 5-2 to two out from 15-8. to eight. Uh, But uh, Paul Keeley? Yeah, dappling. Back to Mitch Rover, the extra places. Lovely. Dappling it is. Tom Siegel? Uh, Persica for me. OK. Very, very keen on him. So that's a price boost you might be interested in, actually, then. What price the price boost? 
I've, no, I don't need to. Right? That person is going to win. I don't need the other four with me. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, <laughs> I'll go for Twilight Romance, We Never Stop, and Land Lover to, uh, to finish 6th, 7th, and 8th. Uh, and uh, David Stevens? Uh, just Twilight Romance, and We Never Stop for me. Okay, there you go. Uh, as uh, for you at home, Hackman's too big a price. That says Chazar 112. We never stop each way. Uh, that says uh, Kevin Hasnip. Uh, Twilight Romance uh, each way if, uh, if Mike Boy can get 10 to 1 plus, apparently. So good luck with that. Uh, moving on to the 3 o'clock at uh, York. Uh, a, a mile handicap uh, over. Uh, over the mile, 20 runners here, Northern Express 6 to 1, Aku Nashville 6 to 1, 8 to 1 Sunny Lister, 9 to 1 Dutch Decoy, 10 to 1 Orban, 11 to 1 Point Linus, Blue for you is 12s, uh, Tuwada at 12s, uh, bigger prices the rest, including uh, the Gatekeeper, uh, Orban, uh, old friend slash enemy, Master Richard, who's got course form, Spirit Catcher, who dotted up the other day, Darkness, who Sam Hart in the production studio will be having a. Uh, a uh, uh, an aneurysm if he doesn't back that one and it wins. Uh, racing brakes rider has got a little bit of a squeak if it rains. Uh, Eileen Dove, Escobar, Cruyff turn all got course form. Latrini dad as well. This is a proper handicap. Poor Keeley. Let's hope it's not like the Golden Mile at Goodwood where <laughs> it got turned on its head and oh yeah, draw got turned on its head. It it? You know there hasn't been, you know there's no massive draw. It's not been a massive draw race this. You've had winners from from high draws, low draws. It was it's interesting today that they did actually stay. Far side on the round course, didn't they? Like, yeah. You know, so it might be some sort of advantage, but you never know what they're going to do from day to day, and they do spend a lot of time coming up the centre in these. So I'm not going to worry too much. Well, and as two. you know full well with Aztec Empire as well, you can get badly hampered on that rail. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. you, you yeah. probably don't want to be. You don't want to be trying to burrow your way down. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, thanks, mate. No, yeah. it's all right. I was, mate. I was trying to be, you know, really nice, bullish, and keep yeah. up, like you know. But it's cost me an absolute fortune that one. Thanks for reminding. That's me. all right. I mean, you, I mean, you had four more winners than I did today. So <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know, but I had an awful lot running on. That's the problem. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I've back two uh, in this one. I think Point Linus is very interesting simply because he is just. I mean, he's only run. Three times at York, but he just looks like an out and out York horse. Yeah. He was uh, fifth of 16 in a nursery at the meeting two years ago. He actually won a uh, three year old handicap last year, got demoted for interference, uh, placed second. And then he was second, beaten ahead in May in an incredibly good handicap um, um, to uh, Croupier, who went on and finished second in the um, in the Buckingham Palace, Northern Express was third. He finished third in the Buckingham Palace and then won another race at York. Astro King finished fourth, uh, finished second in the John Smith's Cup. Blue for you came out and, and it was fifth and came out and hacked up. It's just a Bo really, Pedro was sick. really Bo Pedro well. won the other night. Yeah, there's yeah. four other winners further down as well. Guido's won out of like, it as you well. Know, so, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's just. Jazzy, didn't he win um, as well? No, I don't think he did actually. Oh, my. <laughs> I imagine that. But, no, he didn't. He, uh, got, he anyway, got beaten on the line the other yeah, day. Yeah, but but anyway, it's just an outstanding piece of handicap form. And okay, he didn't he didn't run so well in the uh, in the Hunt Cup himself, but a couple of those uh, around him didn't run well in it and came out and, and and ran really well afterwards. So so I'm not worried about that. He's a York horse. He likes fast ground. He's gonna yeah. He's just gonna run really well, and this will have been the aim all season, won't it? So uh, yeah, back to him. And the other one I back to Sonny Liston. A little bit of a worry about him and the fact that he's run at York twice and run badly twice. Mm. Not my sort of horse for that. But he wouldn't have stayed in the John Smith's Cup last time anyway. And he also went without the earplugs that he wore when second in the Hunt Cup and fifth uh, last time in the Golden Mile when uh, he didn't get the best of runs. So I'd give him one. I'd give him one more go round here because he's in really really good form. Uh, and I think he's got. A, I think he's got a decent prize in him. Yeah, yeah. It is. He is, is one of those. He's, I agree. He's got a decent prize in him. But there is, there is that York factor. There is There's a so nagging. Many York there is a in nagging here. worry about that. But I do think he's still a well handicapped horse. Yeah, yeah. Something less than an eight to one. Uh, but there are uh, yeah plenty of York horses uh, here in the market. has been very strong about Northern Express. Tom, is that one of you? Uh, one of yours? He's. I mean, he's a he's a right old yardstick, Northern Express, isn't he? You can you can run him in anything, and he never lets you down. Yeah, I thought he was the right favourite. Uh, it's not one of mine, but I thought he was the right favourite. I didn't I didn't get the Aku Nadja uh, sort of gamble in midweek. Uh, he's obviously got potential, but he's obviously pretty pretty uh, fragile too, and not convinced by him. Sonny, listen, I get definitely because I think this is going to be run at a ridiculous pace. Now, when I say things like that, it always goes the other way around. I had no idea that Artistic Star and Doville Legend were going to serve it up to Gregory yesterday, and I had no idea Mossadegh was going to make the running. I thought, I, in fact, if you'd have asked me, I'd have got it completely the other way around. 
in all those both those races. So trying to predict what's going to happen is pretty hard. But there is a load of front runners in there to Wada and Mr. Richard down the bottom. There's four Mark Johnson horses. I know Dutch decoy isn't going to make the running, but they all like to race. And I think that's what Sonny Liston needs. I think he needs them to go bonkers up front, like they did at like they did at Ascot. And that's why I give him a good chance. But the other one I gave a good chance. I mean, I thought I was being really clever and sort of going against the grain and thinking that Orban was the best of uh, David O'Meara's, and now he's the shortest price of them. He was twenty-five to one a few minutes ago, and that is my fault. That is my fault. But I just thought, I just think he's been running better. In fact, I think he's in the same form he was last year. It's just he hasn't had the draws or the luck that he had last year. This year, he, 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 had, he was drawn 19 in the Golden Mile instead of one or wherever he was, and he flew home to finish eighth or ninth. He, had, he got stopped badly in a slowly run race at Sandown at the weekend. Last year in this race, he was, he's a stone better off for Blue for You, and he was beaten, a cup, uh, beaten three or four lengths, but he got no sort of run at all. So I thought, with the way the race was going to be run and uh, uh, being really quick, it might suit Orban. I'm very disappointed to see the, the nine-year-old that hasn't won for about 20 runs is 10 to 1 because I don't think he should be that short. I think he should be a bit bigger than that for sure. But I do think he's going to go go well, provided there is the pace set up I think there's going to be. Who knows? He's drawn in 11. He was in 11 last year, I think. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm, as I say, I'm not worried about the draw. But I do think Northern Express is the right favourite because I just think he's improving. Never runs a bad race. A mile at York is no problem to him. And I think he's certain to go well because he's such a good, strong traveller. And I think Keels wrote in his piece yesterday what he likes at York is travellers. He's one of them. That's why he's so effective at York as well as handling the ground. But uh, so so he's definitely on my list. I think Sonny Liston will go well. And the big price one, I thought, was Orban, but he's not a big price anymore. OK, Orban is a, a 10 to 1 shot, then one of the many. Uh, York courses in this race for the uh, the Clipper Handicap. Let's see what everyone at home uh, will be back in. Cruyff turn, big prize of the track he favours, uh, says Simon Cassidy. Escobar 25 to 1 each way, says Callum uh, Mira Wilson, second in this race last year, off £5 uh, higher. Uh, and uh, Tom Leach says he was on Auburn on Sunday, and obviously he wins tomorrow because he's not on the patented Paul Keeley system, as we all know. <laughs> Uh, but uh, David Stevens, uh, extra places, uh, price boost, well backed horses, what do you got? Yes, five places each way. Orban very well backed, uh, 20s down to 10s, as a result, no doubt, of Tom. So he's only got himself to blame for that. Uh, David O'Mara is the subject of the price boost in this. He's got four, I think, in the race, um, along with Orban. Uh, David O'Mara to win this race is 4-1 to one from 3-1. to one. And for what it's worth, sorry, Kills, I'm also in the Point Linus camp. He's got that York form. Forget the Hunt Cup. This will have been his target, I hope. So Point, uh, point, Linus, point Linus for me. David O'Mara to win it 4-1 to one from 3-1. to one. OK. David O'Mara straight away another 3 o'clock at York. Uh, and, uh, yeah, Tom Siegel, me. 5-2 to two, Richard Allen to win the previous one. 4-1 to one, David O'Mara to win this. Price boosts uh, that Tom Siegel would be interested in. Uh, in theory, if he wasn't so confident on his selections in and of themselves. That's, that's... Sure I'm more interested in this one than the Hannon one, that's for sure. Yeah. I think Blue for You's got a good chance as well, hasn't it? Uh, OK, so, um, but you're going with Orban and... Well, I like, well, I, boringly, Northern Express, I think, will run really well as the right favourite. OK. Uh, Paul Keeley? Yeah, Point Linus and Sonny Liston. OK, no. David Stevens. Point Linus. There we go. Now let's uh, let's move on then. Uh, if you are watching right now live, seven seven hundred plus of you watching right now. So uh, again, do press the uh, the little uh, thumbs up uh, button. Do like the uh, the stream. Like I said, we've got a, a record number. And Tom Siegel uh, says he will come in uh, for Champions Day. Present pundit and do the prize boost as well. So there you go. Uh, the the Yorkshire Oaks, the feature race on day two of the uh, the Ebor meeting Group One here uh, with a very big field lining up. Uh, the social poll, who wins? Save the last dance, 35% of your blue stocking, 25 with free win, 25 and other 15%. But that other covers a, a hell of a lot of ground. Uh, and save the last dance was a comfortable favourite, but he's now drifting probably because the ground is rattling fast and free wind is into four to one favourite. Uh, it's nine to two, save the last dance and blue stocking. Al Husson is six to one with warm heart, nine to one Novakai, ten to one stay alert. Uh, Ross Carberry is 14 to one. Uh, sea Silk Road and Poptronic uh, make up. Uh, the uh, the field here, uh, but even they have a decent form on fast ground over this trip. So it is a little bit of an open race, um, but uh, yeah, 
Not a lot, though, uh, at Paul Keeley, of genuine fast ground form to get stuck well, no, into. Well, no, that's it. I was just looking at a poll. 35% save the yeah. last dance. 15 or 8, that is, 35%. Yeah. And she's 9 to 2. Only three and a half people voted, though. Yeah, that's it. Right. <laughs> Nobody wanted a... Um, nobody else wants to back her, that's for sure. And you can see why, can't you? Because, I mean, she's obviously absolutely blew everybody away when she won at Chester. It was soft ground again last time. And she, well, for most of the time, she looked like she wasn't going to win, didn't she, the, the Irish Oaks? Uh, and she looks like she needs further. I mean, she just looks like she, she's an out-and-out stay. You can't say she doesn't handle fast ground because she was second in an Oaks uh, on it. But, I mean, she was uh, she was outgunned by the Gosden filly, whose name I've forgotten. And... Uh, I just don't think she's going to like, I don't think she's going to Soul Sister, that's it. I should know Soul Sister because the horse I really, really fancy for this is one that was beaten by Soul Sister in the Musadora, and that's Novakai. Now, I have been chipping away at her for the last, well, since the five days, and I saw William Buick's name up on the... Uh, she was, you know, she was also always like last year, and she was second in the, uh, the Mayhill, second in the Phillies Mile, and at that point I had a rating of 113, which is only one pound lower than saves the last... Dances is now and mm. one pound higher than Blue Stocking, who, who had the market. And she sort of lost it a bit earlier this season. The, the comeback in the Music Dora was fine because she was always going to want further. Um, I don't really know why they bothered running her in the French Oaks because it was, just, was never going to be far enough for her and she had all sorts go wrong for her anyway. But I mean, she just blew everything away last time. I know it was a listed race. I know that on her best form she was entitled to win, but I love the way she did it. Yeah. And, you know, I think. I. Think she could end up being the best of the three-year-olds. Well, yeah. You know, I think there's every chance that she could because I don't think any of the three-year-old form is that good. If I was looking to have a bet in something else, it, uh, it would be uh, another uh, a horse of another uh, an older horse. Uh, and you know, I, I, you know, part of me thinks, well, Al Hazen, um, we're looking at a Nassau winner going off at thirteen to two against what well, I think is like, you know fairly bunch of average horses, uh, average three-year-olds, uh, and she is actually bred to get the trip. I know she hasn't tried it, but mm. she's a she's a half-sister to uh, a horse that won over further than a mile and a half, I think, so so I don't think there's any... She uh, is, yeah, uh, Mashawa, who yeah. is a mile and six. Yeah, yeah. So uh, well, I think, a mile and a half so I think she'll mile probably six. stay. She is backing up from, you know, a hard race in the in, um, last time, but... Um, yeah, it's quite, ground actually, it's quite, quite interesting. Ground, 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 ground mm. could be the issue. The only horse I have backed is Novakai. I think yeah. she's, I think she's the wrong price. I, you know, every time I see double figures, I have to go in and have a little bit more. I was just going to say, by the way, about Al Hussein. Um, I was talking to someone earlier on about the, the theory that um, the the Mac team horses in particular, I think, always go off slightly bigger because they don't have relatable cuddly names. And you know, you had earlier <laughs> Mostadaf versus Paddington. No, you know, yeah, no one's be. making memes yeah, of Mostadaf. Well, well, I mean, on one, you know, it was like we did say last night on one race form, Mostadaf should have been fat. Yeah, because it's a miles better piece of form than, than Paddington's last time out. Right? Yeah, and an RPR of 116 last time out is the best piece of form yeah. coming into this, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the ground could be an issue, couldn't it? And the fact that it was a hard race because it was a right bog at Goodwood that day. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Uh, but um, yeah, the uh, second in the the Melrose, uh, Al Hussein's uh, it, yeah. uh, sibling. So uh, there is a bit of uh, a bit of hope there for uh, for sure. Al Hussein is a six to one shot. Is there a possibility that save the last? I mean, there's been money for Warm Heart. Save the last has drifted out. Is there a possibility they don't run her tomorrow, Tom? Yeah, no, it's not. That's not their normal mo, is it? Mm. Uh, the, the, you know, Group One. You know, I, I, I don't know. Listen, I would run her. You know, she's she's been second at Epsom on past ground, hasn't she? I mean, what's to lose? You know, she can still run and still yeah. affiliate. I don't think she doesn't handle it. I just think it's a speed yeah. thing. Yeah, exactly. I don't. I just think she'll get this is the wrong track, wrong ground for her. I'm desperate to take on the Irish Oaks form. I think, I think save the last dance and Blue Stocking. I want to take them on. Uh, and the earlier in the week, I was all over three wind, but I'm slightly worried about the ground for her now. I think she's better on so I know she ran the Middleton here, won the Middleton here on decent ground and the form worked out really well. Everything from that race has come out and run really well since. Rogue, Rogue Lightning and State Occasion and loads of them have come out and won good races since. So I don't think she's out of it. But I'm just slightly worried about the ground and she has, I wonder if she's best fresh. I don't know. I just, just think that she's had, just wasn't, you know, I know the ground was terrible last time, but she, she just finished exhausted. So I wanted to be against them. Al Husson, I get. I was definitely considering her, but I thought 
the ground might be the issue with her. She won one ran once on first ground. I know it was her first start ever. She was seventh of nine in a in a new market maiden. You know, it, you know, you know that that worries me. Walmart is interesting with the money, considering what she did at Ascot. I expect her to be the pace. But I reckon if you're wanting to get the Racing Post tomorrow, mine and Paul's uh, copy are going to be almost identical because I, I, like him, think that Novakai could be the best three-year-old filly over a mile and a half around at the end of the season. And it could be starting here. And I think the last run was pretty good. I'm a huge fan of the King Edward form, the uh, Desert Hero form at uh, Ascot. In, sec in fourth that day was Cloudbreaker, who was right. That, that's really, really strong form. Before that, Cloudbreaker had, finishing, had finished just behind Warm Heart and Blue Stocking in a Newbury Maiden. Novakai literally smashed her, smashed her to bits at uh, Newmarket last time. She's got your form. I think she's going to run really well. I really do. And I think any double figure price you can get should be taken on her. The other one is Stay Alert, who I think has got a chance. If you're looking for an older filly, I think when she won the Group 3 at Newmarket last year, at uh, Newbury last year, she was really impressed. Never off. She was just cantered in. She got stopped about five times up the rail, and she still was good enough to come and beat Colts, older horses, uh, easily. Uh, last time in the Irish, in the Pretty Polly, she was wiped out by Via Sistina. She was completely wiped out. Uh, I don't know if she would have beaten her, but I think she would have gone pretty close. I don't think you could be certain she wasn't going to go close because she was still going really well. Uh, yesterday, she was four points bigger than Ross Carberry, who was behind her that day, and I couldn't work that out. I think she's going to go really well. The one negative I've got, well, I think she'll love the ground as well, which is the thing. The one negative I've got is she was over in France for a Group 1 last on Sunday, and she's been over there and back and is now coming to York because the ground is more in her favour. But it's probably not the ideal preparation. But I think on what she showed last year and when she ran Nashua really close in uh, a listed race or her mate or a maiden at Newbury at the start of the season, she's always been potentially a Group 1 filly on fast ground. So I'll give her, I think Novakai is the one, but I do think Stay Alert is the other one as well. And I love this as a betting race because I think you can take on the top of the market. It's unlike that. Some of these handicaps where you're actually quite fancy northern express whatever it was called i think this is a really good race for a bet because i think the first three there are all take honorable if that's a walk it is now if you say it's a word mr siegel it's a word um uh, quite <laughs> frankly um i'm going to be we've spoke we've spoke for about 20 minutes about this race nobody's mentioned the horse i'm going to back which again uh, given the horses are quite fancy tomorrow could be a, a good or a terrible thing uh but sea silk road is rated three pounds inferior to free wind uh, has, has run three times over a mile and a half on fast ground. Has finished second, first, second, in, uh, twice in Group 2 company and once in Group 3 company. Haggis has got loads of fancied horses tomorrow, but she's 20 to 1. I mean, I can't believe she got... She should have won last time out at Haydock. She just popped Chonic Battle back at a track that does suit those, uh, those tactics. But, you know, this horse... At 7 or 4, this horse was a certainty last time out at, uh, at Haydock, up to 20 to 1 in this. And as you said, I think... The vast majority of the field here aren't going to get ideal conditions. So I thought she was way too big at 20 to 1. She's, got a, she's a thorough galloper over a mile and a half, and I'll be, I'll be hoping she thoroughly gallops into the frame, David Stevens. Well, good luck with that one. I'm not going to say, obviously, don't come back tomorrow if it wins <laughs> or anything, but uh, I, I'm massively in the Al Husson camp here. Started her season seconds via Sistina. That's good form. Then they lowered her sights, took her up to air to win, then... Thought she beat Nashua fair and square at Newcastle on the all-weather. She then won the Nassau last time. Appreciate that. Might have been a tough race and it was only three weeks ago, but you've got to assume she's OK. The trip should be in a compass and I'm not too concerned about the ground because I don't think the evidence, she's only run on good firm once. It was on debut. So for me, yes, she's the Group 1 Philly, Group 1 class. And I feel it could be another painful or slightly mixed, shall we say, mixed emotions for Jim Crowley, another Group 1 that he would have been on comes in yeah that is true yeah it's going to be a very very frustrating uh, uh, a week if that happens uh, as I for Ross I think you'll get over it while he's sunning himself with Barbados or wherever he is yeah, <laughs> yeah. fair enough That's I, I, I know where I know where he is it's slightly closer to home and it's not Barbados yeah he's, he's coming up he's coming up your driveway Tom Siegel to give you a give you a thump <laughs> uh, but <laughs> uh, the, the Yorkshire Oaks Paul Keeley yeah Novakai 
Yeah, really Not like a guy it. it is. Uh, another guy for Tom Siegel as well. Uh, David Stevens. Al Husson. Al Husson, it is. And I'll go for Sea Silk Road as well. So uh, we've got three more races to get through to uh, tomorrow. Uh, and uh, we've got a, uh, a listed race uh, over a, a mile and a half. Uh, for horses who might be good enough for the Yorkshire Oaks in time, but not necessarily this year. Uh, C Theme is four to one favourite, Madara five to one, one evening eleven or two, Morikana seven, Spring Fever eight to one, market value eleven, scenic twelves, making me do it is twelve to one as uh, as well, uh, uh, which is uh, surely a perfect tee up to go over to Tom Siegel. Uh, with uh, with that one, but it is uh, fourteen to one and bigger than rest. Uh, and uh, and C Theme four to one again. This is uh, this looks a really open race. C Theme looked a, a, a cracking prospect last time at uh, 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 Tom, but um, again, you go through this field, and where's the fast ground form? Obviously, a lot of them haven't run on it, uh, but uh, a lot of the uh, the improvers at the top of the betting have proven themselves either on the old weather or on softer conditions. Yeah, I mean, uh, listen, they've only run a few times. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know really. I mean. I would imagine being by Sea the Stars. I know she's out of a whipper mare that Sea Theme will be fine on a final on the ground. It's just a rubbish price, isn't it? And was she rated 87 or something? Mm. Or, 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 she, or, or not even got a rating because she hasn't run that much. But on form, she's she's a long way behind a few of these. Uh, not much because there's not much top class form in it. But she's obviously got a chance. Tom Mark Wan's chosen her over the market value. I was slightly surprised at that, to be honest. I thought Market Value had a bit of a decent, had a bit of a chance uh, out of the uh, Ascot Gold Cup winner estimate. She's clearly going to stay very well. I thought maybe the ground was there against her at, uh, at uh, Chester last time, but the form was pretty good. The winner was on a roll, and the third has come out and won at least one since she was really impressive in a racing league race the other day. Topness. I was a little bit surprised Market Value uh, was uh, the, the disparity in price between the two. That's down to the, the mark one, but didn't know anything about Madara. I thought she was probably a false. Well, I don't know. She's the highest rate, she's one of the highest rated horses in the race, but because she finished fifth of last of five in a listed race last time, I think it might be a fail. I thought one evening was going to run, run well just on the pedigree, uh, being by Galileo, and she stayed really well last time. She was unlucky, she got trapped on the inside at. York. It's not a race I'm too interested in as a betting thing, but I thought one evening was one. And I have to mention the top one, Morikana, for Sheila Lavery, because she ran in the, I think it was the best handicap ever run at Royal Ascot, the one won by Akita Sushi. But she ran very, very well, and she was a bit unlucky. She was she was in and out. She was drawn on the outside, she swapped in, went out, went, in, went back in again. She wasn't even very far. So that would be my two, one evening and Mor Morikana, but I mean, you will probably look to greater detail at this race but I thought there's plenty that were going to make a step forward and you've got to land on the right one. Mm, absolutely yeah and uh, I mean you were, you, you were both banging about Novakai form I thought Climate Friendly and Elmay were a little bit interesting out of that race one was put through the rail at a crucial point um, Elmay completely cocked up the start and ran really mm. nicely they're both 20 to 1. Keels what are you doing? Yeah exactly it's, it's, it's you know, you, know you, you can you can go through it and make cases for, for loads couldn't you I was all set to have a good anti-post bet on market value for the Melrose on Saturday. Because I thought she's going to absolutely relish stepping up uh, to one mile six, that would have been. Mm. Uh, relish stepping up in trip and was absolutely chucked in off a mark of 83. Uh, I mean, that second to Sparks Fly with, with, with Totnes behind. I mean, Totnes, she was giving eight pounds to Totnes and now rated 90. She's got a mark of 83, so she's the lowest rated in here. But William Agus has obviously got Lordship for the Melrose. He's one of the favourites, or is the favourite, I think. Uh, and, and he's got and Alhambra, Alhambra Palace. He's off Palace, 79. Who's, who's off 79, but will be out of handicap if the top weight runs. Um, so he decided to come for a listed race uh, with a filly with a very, very low rating. But he won one when we were at Sandown on Cold Eclipse Day. He did. Uh, with a 22 to 1 shot um, that was the, easily the lowest rated horse in the race when he. You know, he doesn't waste his entry because if he thinks it's worth running her in this race as well as a C theme, then uh, I think it's worth taking notice. Um, she's obviously going to stay very, very well. Yeah. Uh, and she was taken out of a race, I think, because of soft ground uh, once, and it was good to soft at Chester. So I think she's going. I think she's going to like the ground, uh, and I hope she'll run well. Double figure price would do for me. Okay, uh, and he's won this twice in the past 10 years with horses rate 93 and 94. So, yeah, uh, they do try to improve for the, uh, the Haggis uh, team. But Sea Theme 4 to 1, David Stevens. Well, delighted to say we have a William Haggis to win this race special. It was 9 to 4, now a 3 to 1. 
Uh, four places each way, and I'm in the one evening camp, lightly raced, bit of course form, a little bit of, well, of course, experience. Uh, the dog's just having a howl there. She doesn't agree with me. And yes, that's it. One one evening for me. I thought Ryan Moore, an interesting jockey booking for the Gostons. Okay, there we go. Let's see uh, the 410 at York tomorrow. Two more to get through after the 445 uh, at uh, York. Another uh, nursery here. Seven furlongs of distance uh, for, uh, for, uh, for, uh, for this one. Um, and uh, designer can be back to nine to two to win uh, today's 445. Perhaps uh, there we go. Yeah, is that still available? <laughs> yeah, we we'll have some of that. Yeah, absolutely. Bizarrely, Ranger Bamboo was six to four despite getting beat. I don't know what's going on there? Uh, Arrogant Castle eleven to two favourite. Expo Choice six to one. Ajwadi eight to one. Blue Collar nine to one. Lincoln Legacy eleven to one. Twelve to one. Gamron uh, and Keep Warm. Gushing Gold at fourteens uh, and plenty uh, of interest in two-year-old form uh, on offer here. Uh, William Haggis and Andrew Balding have won this uh, the uh, the past couple of years. Andrew Balding in particular has got a cracking chance here with uh, with Arrogant Castle, who was mightily impressive on fast ground at Epsom. Uh, he was. He was, and he's obviously got a chance, but I mean, we were talking about this off-air, but there was a big, big eye-catcher at Newmarket the other day, wasn't there? I mean, mm. both like a uh, blue collar for Richard Hannon, um, who perhaps with a, a more vigorous ride may well have won uh, a race at Newmarket um, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I thought it was a really, really, really eye-catching run and a strong pace. Um, in, in, in a big field handicap, she could suit him right down to the ground. So he was the one for me. Yeah, blue collar. He's actually, to my eyes, he's been an eye catcher in literally every single one of those runs. So uh, you often find with those horses, the only worry is that those horses, you then ask them to go, come on, we want you to win yeah. now. And it sometimes takes him a run to, to yeah, get to into work that out mix. what to do, yeah. But I mean, he, I could go well, couldn't he? Yeah, 9 to 1 then, blue collar uh, for this at Seven Furlong Nursery. Uh, lots of unexposed types here. Uh, Tom, uh, you were excited about today's uh, nursery. What did you make of tomorrow's? Yeah, really, really interesting race. Now I get the blue collar thing. I quite was quite impressed by Aj Wadi at uh, Ponty Pratt the other day. I had quite interested in the race because there were two. There was a Michael Stout horse and a Carl Burke horse that run really well on their debuts. And they were buying it out for the at the top of the market in the morning and all afternoon and then come the off time everyone seemed to want to be on Ajwadi and he won pretty comfortably he beat a horse of Mark Johnson's that got sort of loose on the lead and I thought he was uh, a really interesting horse I was quite surprised that uh, I didn't see Oshin or on him but I reckon there's probably a reason behind that and uh, I, uh, I I thought he might be the one he might be the one Ajwadi I just think he's got plenty more to come from him I know that was a drop back to six last time at Ponty but it's very stiff stick there and he was strong at the finish, so he was the one for this in me. But uh, the one for this in me, he was the one for this. I liked, but uh, I thought there was loads of them. Loads. You can make a case for loads. And Lincoln Legacy was another one. I thought I had a chance. And as Phil said, uh, Blue Collar has been a was a big eye catcher in Newmarket. Okay. Uh, is it possibly a weight thing with Oshinora as well? I'm just you know eight stone eight. Think, you've seen it. Lo Lois he's done in the past twelve months is eight stone ten for Oshinora, and there's they've got two in it. So. <laughs> Oh, there we go. That will be the answer then, won't it? Yeah. Because if, if he hasn't done eight stone two ever, that Richard McFarley wouldn't be wanting him to ride that. No. Okay, there you go. Uh, a few opinions there in this 4.45. Uh, I demand an extra place at the very least, David Stevens. You can have five places each way Thank in you. this. Uh, Arrogant Castle's been backed at the head of the betting. I can see why. Uh, I take a chance on Gamran, not particularly exposed, but had a couple of these, Lincoln Legacy... And Ballon d'Or behind him last time. Fire, Richard Fahey's Fire, team going well. Has got has run on good to firm. Seven furlongs his trip. So Gamran each way for me. Okay, Gamran each way then at uh, twelve to one. One of uh, many uh, runners from the the Fahey team here in this four forty five. Uh, last race of the of the day then on day two in the the York uh, Ebor meeting is a Phillies handicap over seven furlongs. Where uh, what do you know if it isn't contractually obliged? Uh, to be a 7-2 to two favourite uh, from the uh, William Haggis stable in the shape of unequal love. Uh, Nagiri is 9-2 to two for the, uh, the sushi lovers out there. 7-1 to one Royal Dress, Sophia Starlight 8-1, to one. Naomi Labaglia is 10-1, to one. far too shy, 11-1, Candle of Hope 12-1, to one. Backseed R 14-1. to one. Ah, oh, yes, that name, that name uh, uh, for the, the Carl Burke stable, and it's 16 to 1 and bigger the rest. Uh, uh, plenty of horses have been running some uh, red hot races. Uh, unequal love, though, uh, again, William Haggis is either going to have the greatest day ever tomorrow uh, or, uh, you know, there's going to be a, very expensive failures. Uh, it's what you get with Haggis, isn't it? I mean, you get you with these, you get, you know, so many of these unexposed horses, very good at 
getting horses handicapped by winning races, mm. which uh, a lot of other people choose, you know, uh, by finding the weak horse to win. Them, you know, find, you know, down the field the maiden, and then we'll go for get a mark. But yeah. finds weak races to win, and they still turn out to be very, very well handicapped. The only problem is they never, ever get missed by the bookmakers. Yeah. And here I've got a 7-2 to favourite in a 19 runner race. She can win, but I can let her win at that price. Uh, I'm going to give one more chance uh, to a filly that we've backed a couple of times. Baxi Dar, yeah. who just hasn't had things go right for her um, since she won three starts ago. I mean, we, we were there at Sandown. She's only beaten two lengths in that listed race. Uh, not getting a run. I'm not 100% sure she wanted the easy ground, but she certainly didn't run badly last time at Goodwood, been sixth. Um, so give her one one shot. I mean, if there's a place where you're less likely to run in some trouble, it's probably York, isn't it? Mm. You know what I mean? So I'd give I her also that. think the drop back's interesting. Yeah, she was, the drop she back too keen last yeah, time. Yeah, she was too keen. So she gets a strong run race, yep. uh, and if she likes the ground, um, then I think she's going to run well at a price. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, if I thought she was a... Again, if I thought she was a better six to one in a listed race, then she's definitely a better fourteens in a handicap, handicap isn't she? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, yeah, she's definitely of uh, of interest. Um, what uh, What about you, Tom? What stood out for this finale? Well, uh, Rafe Beckett is having a season of all seasons. He's actually having a better season than William Haggis probably. And he's had, well, probably got a better record in this type of race this season than William Haggis. So Nigiri has to be has to be right near the top after her easy win at your class time but the two I like, I like two at a, a big price I get your black back see dar definitely I thought Naomi Lamblapaglia or Richard Spencer and Oshin Murphy Oshin Murphy doesn't ride them very often but when they do they tend to go very well I thought she was an easy winner last time and had a huge price Jim Goldie's Rock Melody who I think is crying out for seven furlongs been running very well over sprint trips he won over seven furlongs when he was uh when uh uh, she, should I say, when she was trained by, I can't remember, as a, as a two-year-old. Kevin Philip Aunt Defoy. Yeah, that's the one. That's the one. And I think she's in really good form at the moment. I think she ran a big eye-catcher at Ascot last time. And if she gets a pace to run out, I think she's going to improve massively for seven furlongs. Uh, it might be a little bit too stiff for her with the likes of... Uh, the Haggis and the Beckett horse in there, but it was a good race last time. Intrinsic Bond and all those lot were in the Ascot race, and she, she finished really well in behind them. I think if she does stay the seven furlongs, and there's no reason why she can't, she won't put on pedigree, she should easily. She'll go right at a big price. Okay, big price there. I also thought Nizaka was a little bit big as well. She hasn't run over seven furlongs on fast ground since last summer when she bolted up twice. And uh, this week last year, she was sent off 13 to 2 for a group race at Sandown, 33 to 1 under ideal conditions here. At uh, York for this 5:20. So um, I tell you what. I mean, if some of these winners go in tomorrow, David, then we're going to have some we're going to have some right old fun. Uh, but uh, yeah, there's there's some strong opinions flying about. <laughs> there are as there sh as there should be. Um, unequal love. Look, it'd be no surprise to see her win at all, but she is priced accordingly now. Five places each way, I should say, in this finale. I am joining Tom in the Naomi Lapaglia Lapaglia camp. A uh, whole shed load of winners came out of her. Uh, debut win, then she was aimed at the 1,000 guineas. Not quite sure uh, if they fancied a day out in that one, but she's hopefully now sort of found her mark again. Only gone up three pounds for that new market win, and ten to one each way with those five places will do for me. Okay, that's the final race on tomorrow's card. Then the uh, the naps are coming up in just a second. Thousands and thousands of runners tomorrow at York uh, uh, for Yorkshire Oaks Day. So, what is the best bet of the day from our panel, Paul Keeley? Uh, well, it's it's one of those incredibly hard days, isn't it? But um, just had a look at all my open bets, and apparently, I fancy Novakai an awful lot more than I even I thought I did. <laughs> there you go. Uh, so the, uh, the the open bets column is telling me that is Novakai. Uh, what about you, Tom? Well, it was going to be Novakai, but I won't go for that. I'll go for Persica in the sales race. I think he might be a class above his opposition. OK, Persica it is. Uh, David Stevens. I'm going to be a lot safer, I think. Hopefully, relief rally in the Lowther with symbology. 
chasing her home at a big price. Yeah. Okay, there you go. And uh, I think I've backseed our three runs, two runs running, two runs running uh, to, uh, to, today. And seeing as you've all gone for horses in races, I are fancy. No, actually, you know what? No, Queen's Guard or Symbology, yeah, in the first, because uh, just, just, just to see Tom Siegel come on and, and congratulate me like the gentleman that he is. I will, I will <laughs> send you a bottle of champagne, and that's, that's the deal if, they, if one of them wins. Okay, will it have any champagne in it? Yes. <laughs> okay, lovely still. I'm out Join us tomorrow to see if I get that bottle of champagne from Tom Siegel uh, or if the Siegel has the last squawk. Uh, we'll be back for more fun and games tomorrow night at 6pm. <laughs>